Okay, Dean Lucky Show for the week of Georgia's game with Appalachian State. Georgia with a big win this past week over the Gators, a 23-20 win, a little bit more exciting than it probably should have been. Uh, Georgia surrendering a 17-point, uh, allowing the Gators to score 17 points in a row uh, before closing the game out in the fourth quarter. Uh, certainly the better team won, but perhaps not by the margin or the way in which they wanted to win. So uh, the point is that, uh, you know, Georgia's still in it, if you want to call it that, in the SEC East. Uh, more importantly, though, you know, 3-1 and one for Aaron Murray against the Gators. That's a pretty big deal. Three wins in a row for Georgia over Florida. Uh, that hadn't happened in a lot of people who's watching this lifetime. lifetime. Uh, so... You know, I, it's a big weekend. Um, and now Georgia will get Appalachian State, a team that's uh, certainly not what they were in 2007, a team that's really struggling. It's just not very good, uh, frankly. And that's what Georgia needs right now. They've, they've, had, a, uh, they've had a long month uh, since that Tennessee game. Uh, it took out about half of the offense. And uh, now they'll have their chance to sort of relax, you would imagine. Um, you know, but there's been no easy game for Georgia this season. That's what happens when you Clemson, schedule Clemson at the beginning of the season and you, um, you know, you have the slate that Georgia typically has in the SEC. There's just been no easy game. And the attrition on the offensive side of the ball has been difficult. And there's been some attrition on the defensive side too, but I don't like the offense. Let's get straight to the questions and I'll probably ramble on from there. Uh, Swanee Doggo 3 asks, well, Jonathan Rump made it into the game, uh, which is, he did make it into the game, he didn't make any catches, but uh, he did get into the game, so he'll be playing from here on out. We'll see what happens with uh, Jonathan Rump. Uh, is the defense making improvements or just pe- facing horrible offensive teams in the recent weeks or a little of both? I definitely think it's a little bit of both. Um, the Gators are pretty bad. Um, but with that said, you know, Georgia really shut them down. I think Florida had one drive. Um, one scoring drive of over 50 yards, and that was it. Um, they scored on a penalty on a uh, they scored they scored on a uh, safety, and they scored on a, um, a a drive that was set up at the 10 yard line because of Ari Lynch's drop a lateral. So uh, that really helped Florida get uh, nine of their of their 20 points. And um, you know, if the game was 23 to 11, I don't know if there'd be much complaining from the Georgia sideline. Um, but, you know, that play really gave the Gators momentum, big momentum. We hadn't seen that kind of momentum in that game on either side. Um, I don't I don't think I, I can say I, I, it must have been since the 80s. If You know, obviously, Lindsey Scott play was a big deal, but um, and Georgia ended up winning that game. Florida had that play, uh, but they didn't win the game. So um, that was crazy. Um, but, you know, um, as uh, – as, as it goes, um, you know, I think one thing is important here. You can't make the argument, and I'm not saying Swanee Dog is, but you can't say um, they're facing bad defenses so they're getting better and not acknowledge that they're facing better, they're bad, bad offenses now uh, and say, well, are they getting better and not acknowledge that the first month of the season with Clemson, South Carolina, and LSU um, – and Missouri uh, soon thereafter, you can't you can't you know say they're not playing anybody any good right this second and not acknowledge what they they've been dealing with. Um, they've they've had a much more challenging uh, schedule versus offensive teams than than anybody in the country. I mean, if you look at their strength of schedule, Georgia's obviously is number one right now, and it probably will be for the rest of the year. But um, they've played some teams that can really put points up on the board, uh, namely Missouri. Uh, as well as LSU, uh, Clemson, uh, and even South Carolina, who has has developed more of an offensive game than 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 defensive. So that's what's going on. Is that you know you're not they're not playing teams that are in the top you know thirty or whatever it is offensively. Um, they're starting to play teams that are you know a lot more average, and you're seeing better results. But at the same time, Georgia has forced more field goals the last two games. Um, they've uh, they've made you know, game-changing plays. It's just that against Vanderbilt, they were robbed of the game because of uh, the game-changing play being overturned by some, you know, phantom call by the SEC officials. So that's what happens. Uh, Still should have won the Vanderbilt game. Uh, What's your best guess at which bowl game Georgia has the best chance of going to? 
That is a long answer to question. Uh, let me get to some other ones first because that bowl thing is tricky this year. Um, what do you think the rotation of the secondary will look like this weekend against Appalachian State? I think it's going to be, you know, the, the starters will be the same. Maybe Trey Matthews gets in there in place of another safety, and they go with their sort of traditional lineup, which would be, at this point, Swan on one on one corner, Shaq Wiggins on the other, with Josh Harvey Clemens and Trey Matthews. That would That's possible, but then again, it could be Corey Moore starting. I certainly think he's earned that. He's made two very good plays, one an interception against Vanderbilt, uh, pretty athletic play, and then you know the game ender, so to speak, against the Gators this past week. You know, Corey has earned more playing time and perhaps has earned a starting position. Uh, so we'll see what happens back there. That's a good question. I mean, on the, the corners are going to be Swan and and uh, Shaq Wiggins, who has really played well and has played with an attitude the likes of which this defense needs to continue to cultivate and develop. Um, can't ignore the fact that um, these guys are going to break the record for how many. Freshmen have started in a season, sophomore or youngers have started in a season as well. So they're young, um, but they are getting better. And I think if you can't see that, then you maybe you don't want to see it, I guess. I'm not really sure that the run defense for Georgia has been very good. They're fortunate that they're that that's something they're good at. The, their big test is coming up, you know, in however many days against Auburn. You know, Auburn runs the ball. Um, and not in a physical way necessarily, but sort of a, a, a difficult to run you down kind of way. Um, they get a lot of rushing yards uh, without being touched. Uh, I saw one statistic not that long ago. So the secondary uh, has started making a few plays here and there. But the defense is playing better. I, I don't think there's any question about that. It's just you're not going to get any credit for playing better when you're playing against uh, the Gators and Vanderbilt. Now, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, you play who's on the field, and to me, they played they played a lot better. I mean, they they would have won the game against Vanderbilt. The, the defense would have won the game had the special teams not goofed it up. If there are no significant significant injuries this week, will Chris and Chris Conley is back next week? Who do you think should be favored uh, in the Georgia Auburn game? I think Auburn is going to be favored. Um, but I think that because uh, Chris Conley doesn't make that much difference. One player who's you know not the quarterback or the star running back like Todd Gurley, they're not going to make that much difference. Some um, some there, there's to some degree um, Auburn has one really big win, which would be Texas A&M. They lost to LSU, and sort of the I don't want to say the meat of their schedule, but a lot of what Auburn will be defined, um, the, the definition of their season is against Auburn and is against Bama and Georgia. And it will be curious. I mean, I fully expect them to beat Tennessee and Knoxville, but Georgia and Bama is no easy out for Auburn. They've, they've played well this year. I mean, I don't, but, I mean, you could argue Georgia has, you know, one better win than Auburn because Georgia has a win over South Carolina and LSU. Neither Neither team, I think, um, um, the Tigers would beat. Frankly, they didn't beat one of them. I don't. I don't, I don't know. It would depend on where the game with South Carolina is played. Um, but uh, I think Auburn will be favored, and I think that uh, that's just one of those games. If you're Georgia, where you say, "Well, they're favored," but I mean, we've beaten their brains in the last two years. So, what, what difference does that make? And we got Todd Gurley back. That that's the big thing. Look, let's not. <laughs> It's not really makes a big difference. Um, just, just period. I, I got an email today from some idiot talking about, um, you know, there's no excuse for Georgia to be five and three and this that, and the other. All right, well, whatever. I mean, if if you think that losing Ty Gurley and and uh, Justin Scott Wesley and Michael Bennett, I mean, did you see Michael Bennett play against Florida? How how good was Michael Bennett in those those times? They make huge differences, and it adds up on the margin. I mean, if these guys had Malcolm Mitchell and all these, I mean, it would make a huge difference offensively. Offense has, has gone backwards. Well, why do you think? It's because they haven't had their players since the LSU game. That's why they're not consistently scoring over 30 points anymore. There's no mystery here. Um, you know, if you don't like the coaching staff at Georgia, that's fine. Um, it's just that you're going to kind of look dumb if you're making that argument. 
Dean, you've said numerous times that Hudson Mason will be fine next year, but that he's no Aaron Murray. Exactly what are the major differences between him and Murray, in your opinion? Well, I mean, Aaron's a better quarterback. For, first of all, he can he can um, he has four years of experience versus zero years of experience, and, and really not that much in the terms of game experience for Hudson Mason. Um, that's that's mainly what I mean. I still expect this offense at Georgia to be pretty high powered in 2014. Um, the you know I forgot to mention Keith Marshall getting hurt. I mean. You know, you're going to have Keith Marshall back. Uh, Justin Scott Wesley will be back. Uh, Malcolm Mitchell will be back. Those are headliners. I mean, those are guys that uh, when Georgia got those guys, now maybe not Justin Scott Wesley as much, but Keith Marshall, when they when they got a commitment from him, that was a huge deal. When they got a commitment from Malcolm Mitchell, that, that pushed the 2011 Dream Team class over the top. You just all they had to do was get Isaiah Crowell at the end, and they did. So, um those guys are major players and have been major players the entire time they've played at Georgia. Um, and, and Hudson Mason's going to have everybody, you know, I don't know who the starting offensive front will be, but it will be, I mean, David Andrews is going to start at center. John Theus will start either at right guard, right tackle. Uh, and um, I'm trying to think. I mean, Colton Houston will almost certainly start. And uh, I would imagine Brandon Cablano, Mark Beard, uh, guys like that are going to get their chance to watch Danzler even. Um, so they're going to be there's going to be some opportunity on the offensive line. But you know, Wilfred has really done a good job in general. Um, it's not been gangbusters, but it's been pretty good with that group they have right now. I mean, that's why you know people say, well, you know, this team is really not that great. Can they win at Auburn or, you know, what, you know, if they stumble into the SEC championship somehow, you know, can they, is there really a point going Alabama will cream them? Well, I mean, you know, that run game against Bama is going to be the same one that ran all over them for four quarters. So, um, that's, that's one, that's one thing about Georgia's offensive line is they've really played well this year. Uh, except, you know that Clemson, and that was that was a challenging environment, and they had a pretty pretty good front four, the Tigers, uh, and you know George scored they did score thirty five points on Clemson. Uh, this is a, I was saving this one for last. What's your best guess for what game uh, bowl game Georgia will will end up going to? That's a good question. Um, that's a that's a tricky question. I mean, it, it, you know, obviously uh, this second. They can go as high as the uh, the Sugar Bowl if they were to win the SEC championship. That seems pretty unlikely, but um, you know I think it looks like now the uh, I'll just go you know I'll just try to go through these bowl games here. Just have some patience with me. Um, I, a lot of it depends on what happens the rest of the season in the West. Um, you know, and does South Carolina at 10-2 and two figure out how to get into the Sugar Bowl as the number two SEC team? I don't know about that. I mean, they may deserve it more than some of the Western schools, but um, you can't, you know, I mean, if Missouri's 10-2, uh, they may be more attractive than 10-3 and three South Carolina or 10 and, or 9-4 or and four South Carolina if they were to lose to uh, Clemson, which is poss- certainly possible uh, coming out of the uh, that game in Columbia. That's going to be... Um, that's going to be a fight between those two schools. Uh, that's a good. That's a good question there. The SEC has a slew of bowl games. Um, I think the big the big question is, you know, um, I'll just go from the bottom. The Music City Bowl, Georgia's not going to go there. Uh, the Advocare, the old Independence Bowl, Georgia will not be in that game. The Liberty Bowl, Georgia will not be in that game. From that point forward, and the the BV the BBVA Compass Bowl, Georgia will not be in that game. That's going to be like the lower end um, of the SEC, which this year would obviously be Vanderbilt if they can get in, uh, Tennessee, Mississippi, guys like that. The question then becomes, where do you go from there? Because um, the Cap- Capital One Bowl is the is the best after that. But they're they are dead to get Johnny Manziel. If they can get him, they're going to get him. I mean, so you know, if A and M finishes nine and three, they're probably going to go to the Capital One Bowl. I think the Capital One Bowl is almost you know obviously they put George played there last year, so they're not going there. Okay, 
Um, that, that's the why. In fact, that's the one game they won't go to. I mean, it's possible they could have wound up in Music City. I mean, it's unlikely. But I mean, the one game they're not going to go to is Capital One Bowl. Then you got to look around and just see what else is left. I mean, the Chick Fil A Bowl against SA Miami that'd be a, a very big possibility. Um, the Gator Bowl um, would. I mean, I'm sure Jacksonville would love to have Georgia back, considering they beat the Gators. That would be a that'd be a, a, a possibility. The Outback Bowl, uh, I, I doubt it, uh, and the Cotton Bowl, I doubt that too. To me, it's 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 somewhere in the Chick Fil A Gator, even Outback. Um, now that I look at it, they're not going. George's not going to go to the Cotton Bowl. Cotton Bowl is going to take either LSU, Texas A and M, or Missouri. It's going to be one of those three, and. Um, uh, to some degree, you know, to some degree, it depends on what happens uh, in the, um, you know, in terms of who goes to the Sugar Bowl. Uh, you know, is that going to be LSU? Is that going to be Missouri? Is that going to be South Carolina? South Carolina can't lose to Florida and go to Sugar Bowl. South Carolina can't lose to Clemson and go to Sugar Bowl. You know, they'll probably be favored in both of those games. They can't lose those games. Um, if if South Carolina goes to, to the um, SEC championship as a ten and three team coming out of it, they're not going to be as attractive as a 10 and 2 Missouri, say. Okay, so um, yeah, that's a long way from Columbia. Um, I think what will happen is the Capital One will take uh, the Gamecocks, if, if I had to guess, if they can't get A&M. But I don't see the Cotton Bowl taking Texas A&M two years in a row. I just don't think that will happen. I think probably, you know, if everything holds the form, if I had to guess, um, one loss, Missouri, going into the championship game, they'd go to the Sugar Bowl. Um, but we'll see if that happens. Today, right now, um, like I see right here, USA Today has the Outback Bowl taking Missouri. There is no shot of uh, Missouri playing in the Outback Bowl. That's half a country away from where Missouri is. I mean, they're not going to send them there. They're not going to, you know, that's crazy. They're, it just It just won't happen. Georgia will either wind up, to me, playing in the Outback Bowl, the Gator Bowl, or the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Those three now are a, about the same. This is the last year of this whole thing. The Chick-fil-A Bowl would be intriguing only because you'd get the number two from the ACC, which is either going to be Clemson, which Georgia would not get Clemson, or Miami, which is very possible because the Canes are probably going to get the snot beaten out of them in the uh, in the ACC championship game. Um, if the ACC does not send a, a team to uh, the BCS championship, in other words, if Florida State doesn't get in, if Stanford doesn't beat Oregon, yada, 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 um, then, then the likelihood of Georgia going to the Chick-fil-A Bowl uh, probably increases because an ACC team, there won't be two in the BCS and the Canes will go to the Chick-fil-A. And, and I would say if Miami is playing in the Chick-fil-A Bowl, then the Georgia Bulldogs will be playing in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. That would be my guess. Um, all these other games, I mean, Auburn, you know, Auburn's 10-1. If they if they beat, if, 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 if a 10-2 Auburn is going to go to the Sugar Bowl over South Carolina, over Missouri probably, uh, over LSU, over, you know, because there's a lot of momentum at, at Auburn. So right now the bowl thing is up in the air. If I had to guess right this second, it, it would be like I said, it would be either the Outback, the Chick Fil A, or the um, or the uh, Gator Bowl. We'll see. I mean, the Gator Bowl is not a great matchup. I think it's about number four or five for the Big Ten, and I think Georgia would lay waste to a lot of those teams in the Big Ten. They're just not very good, um, and. Uh, uh, even even the Outback Bowl might not be the most attractive matchup, but you know we'll see. Georgia will play Appalachian State this week, probably beat the crap out of them, and uh, and then get ready for for a really big game against Auburn. I mean that game is uh, is going to do or die for Georgia and their SEC East hopes. So Dean Luggy, Dean Luggy Show. Hope you tune in next week.